Today we're going to continue working on our comments section inside our website and for this episode we're going to focus on actually trying to get the comments from inside the database and showing them inside the website so we can actually see them underneath our submit section down here. Now before we get started in the actual coding I do want to mention that I did actually went ahead and created just a couple more comments so as you guys can see inside my database I do actually have six comments inside my comments table. So if you guys don't have more than one, I recommend you guys write a couple more comments just so you have something to test out on. So the first thing we're gonna do is I do actually want to get rid of this white background because right now we can actually see a lot of things inside our comment section. So let's actually go to our style sheet first. At the very top here, I'm gonna go ahead and style my body tag and tell it to get a background color as some kind of light gray. So I'm gonna say hashtag DDD. And as you guys can see, now everything is a little bit grayish. So now we can actually see the comment section underneath here. So the first thing we need to do in order to actually get the comments showing is we need to create a function which goes into the database and gets the comments and then shows them inside the website. So if we go to our comments.ink.php file, we're gonna go underneath our function called setComments and we're gonna create a new function. Now this function is going to be named get comments with a big C and you don't have to call it this it's just it makes sense to call it get comments because we're getting comments from the database. A typical coding habit is when we want to set something inside the database or insert something from the database we want to use set. If you want to get stuff from the database we want to use get you know when we name stuff. So now that we have get comments let's actually go ahead and open up the code and make sure that we do actually remember to include the connection this time. So we're gonna say variable con and include it inside our parentheses. Otherwise we can actually get a connection to the database. So now inside the function here, the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go ahead and write the SQL code we want to query inside the database. So I'm gonna write variable SQL equal to a string semicolon. Inside the string, we just need to write a very basic select statement. So I'm going to write select all from comments. So now we just need to run this piece of code inside the database. And we use the exact same code as we have on top of here, but we just create a result variable and say we want to create a connection. And then we want to uh, use a method called query where we run the SQL code we wrote on top of here. Now, if you ask about using the same names for the variables as we did up here, um, right now this would not be an issue because we're inside different functions, so this would be okay. Now, if we were to actually have these, just to show you guys, underneath this code up here because we need to create two different types of connections, then we would need to name these something else because right now it would actually go ahead and, if I were to write this, it would actually go ahead and overwrite whatever we have up here and say, okay, we're going to replace the value of SQL and result with this instead. Just FYI. So now that we have the connection going and we actually run the, the SQL code, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called dollar sign row. Set it equal to our dollar sign result, which points to a method called fetch underscore a suck which basically goes in and gets all the different results from the database and allows for us to echo them out because it inserts them into an array. So if I go below here, I can actually say dollar sign row, which is now an array, create the brackets and give it the name of the column that I want to spit out on the website. So I can actually go ahead and say single quotes, message, and now that we have the message, I can actually go ahead and echo it out. So I'm just gonna write echo first. So now if I go into my front page, I can actually go ahead and just simply include this function here, right underneath our form, semicolon. So now if I go to the website, you guys will notice that I do actually get hi there underneath here. And that's because right now we're just echoing out the first data that we get from the result. If you want to get all the comments, because like you guys can see, hi there is only the top one. I want to get all of them echoed out at once. We do actually need to go inside our function and echo them out using a while loop. 
So right on top of the dollar sign row variable we created down here, let's actually go ahead and create a while loop. And inside the parameter of this while loop, we're going to say, well, we're actually going to copy this entire line, except the semicolon at the end. We want to leave that out and paste it inside our parameter. So now what we're basically saying is that every time we have a result from the database, we need to spit it out. So it's going to loop through all the results until there's no more left. And for each time we have a result, I want to echo out the message of that piece of, uh, of that row that we get a result from. So now if I go to the database or go to the website, you guys can see we get all the comments from the database. Now, of course, right now, they are all pretty much going on right next to each other. So we can actually tell when the next one starts. So right after my echo here, I'm going to go ahead and create a break. Like so, let's actually see if I can spell this correctly. There we go. Let's actually go ahead and include two of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this in twice. And now, as you guys can see, we do actually get the different comments from our database. So what we can do now is we can actually go ahead and say, well, we echoed out the message, but I would like to get the username and the date as well. So I'm going to copy this line of code like so. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete the breaks because I don't think we need them anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and delete those as well. Actually, let's keep the last ones. And instead of message, I'm going to go ahead and echo out UID, which is the username of the person who posted the comment. I'm going to copy this, paste it underneath, and I'm going to go ahead and echo out the date. So now that we have the date, uh, we should probably include another break. So let's just go ahead and just copy one break. like so. And now if we go back to the website, you guys will notice that we get the username, the data was posted, and the message from the post. So now what we can do is we can actually go ahead and just style this a little bit. So we do actually get some styling going on as well. So right now I do actually want all my comments inside a box, a white box underneath each other. So inside our code here, I would like for us to go in and before we start echoing out all the information, I want to echo out a div. Now, just to mention it, right now I'm actually echoing out each line individually. You don't have to do that. You can actually just include everything in one echo, which is actually how I usually do it. But for the sake of this episode, let's just go ahead and do it this way. So I'm just going to create a div and I'm going to copy this echo, paste it underneath our message and then close the div again. Now I'm going to move out my middle echoes just a little bit so we have some order in it. And now that we have this, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete my uh, breaks after the message because we don't actually need those. Now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and say, well, let's actually go ahead and give this div a class. Set it equal to comment dash box because I'm very creative in my naming here. And then we can go into our style sheet. Now at the very bottom here where we have the button, we're going to insert our class called comment box. And we're going to say width is going to be 850, I'm guessing. Uh, it's probably going to be less, let's say 45 pixels. And we're going to go ahead and give it a padding as 20 pixels. We're going to give it a margin bottom as four pixels, a background color as white. And let's just go ahead and give it a border radius as well, just to make it look nice. Border dash radius as four pixels. So let's actually see what we have here now. Uh, somewhat okay. Uh, it's a bit too long. So let's actually go ahead and cut it down to maybe 15. That was actually pretty spot on. So 815 pixels wide. And now because we have the padding, our text is not touching all the way to the side of the box. So I'm just going to go ahead and include some uh, spacing underneath my comment button. So I'm just going to go into my button here and say margin bottom as 60 pixels. Like so. So now we have all the comments showing underneath each other. 
we can also go ahead and give the text a styling. Now, we're not just gonna do styling from now on. We're actually gonna do one more fix, which does actually fix the fact that some of my comments inside the website here are actually supposed to have line breaks in them. If you go into my database, and I do actually go in and edit, just to show you guys, I do actually have some of my comments, not this one, I think this one, which does actually have a break in between the lines, if I zoom in for you guys. And we can't actually see that inside the website right now. And that's because it doesn't know how to interpret the breaks properly. So we do actually get them, you know, going down to the next line. But we're gonna fix that after we style it. So now that we have the div, let's actually go ahead and create a paragraph tag right after the div starts. And then we're gonna close the paragraph tag right before the div closes. We're gonna go into our styling and we're gonna say we have comment box and inside comment box, we have a paragraph. Now we're gonna go ahead and give a font family as Arial, which I really don't like, but we don't have any pretty font, so we're just gonna use Arial for now. We're gonna say font size, set it to 14 pixels. We're gonna say line height to, uh, I'm guessing, 16 pixels and let's say color has tag 282828 which is a very dark gray and let's give it a font weight as well just so we make sure it's not a bold font and there we have it so now we have some very basic styling of the text here we could also go in and just style our date and our username differently if you wanted to but you guys know how to do that so we're not going to do that now, in order to fix the breaking issue that I talked about, uh, we do actually need to go back to our comments function. And we need to include a built-in function inside PHP around our message that we do actually echo out. Because right now it just echoes it out and because our line breaks inside the database are actually seen as a PHP line break called NL, which means new line. And we need to take this NL tag and interpret it as a break instead. Because then when we do actually echo it out on the website, it will understand the break and create a new line. So inside our function, right before the message, you know, dollar sign row message, we're gonna create NL to BR, parentheses. Then we're gonna make sure that the dollar sign row message is inside the parentheses. And now it basically goes in and checks for any kind of NL tags and converts them to breaks instead. So if I go and refresh the website, you guys will notice that now we get line breaks. So if we were to go in and write a comment, create a couple of line breaks, write a comment again, refresh it or submit it, you guys can see if you get all the line breaks. So this is quite a nice feature that you guys should know how to do. So now that we did this, uh, we basically have all we needed to, to basically show the comments. I will probably do just a tiny bit of styling after I'm done with this episode, just to make the user ID and the date look a bit nicer. Um, but that's basically it for this episode. For the next episode, we'll actually talk about how to edit our post inside the database. You know, where you actually have an edit button that you can click and edit them. We're also in the next episode after that one, gonna talk about how to delete comments from inside the database by having a delete button. So for now, this is all we're gonna do. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.